Hey, what's up? It's Thomas from Autofuel calling out from beautiful Stockholm with the all-new Kia EV6 GT, that performance version of the compact EV in a great matte gray styling here. Beautiful paint and a strong look. Well, you can also get the look in the GT line, but the GT itself is this one here, an affordable EV supercar. We will find out in this episode. 3.5 seconds is the acceleration figure to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. You've already seen it. It's really spectacular. And continuing on over here, daytime running light, also very modern. And at the side profile, you can see these massive wheels. And here we are at the side profile, 4 meters 68 or 184 inches, the same length, of course, as all the other EV6 versions. You know, there's a rear-wheel drive version, then there's a normal all-wheel drive version. The GT is then the all-wheel drive version with a higher horsepower tune, 585 horsepower in total. The rear motor is the stronger one, and there are hardware changes to both electric motors if you compare it to the normal all-wheel drive version. Here are the wheels talked about 21 inch then the contrasting brake calipers also looks pretty cool by the way if you have a blue exterior color i think there's an even greater contrast then so i like it in thomas blue but here the matte gray is also very beautiful more hardware changes to it this one gets a different suspension and the interesting thing is they changed the springs front to a softer setup for better handling and rear to a stiffer setup then for more sportiness at the same time it gets adaptive dampers ecs electronically controlled suspension and this then overall should lead to both more sportiness and more comfort at the same time is that true we will find out in the driving part you can see the rear here just a beautiful strong design this integrated spoiler right here with the light running through really spectacular at the rear once again isn't it and also the rest of the figures are super spectacular told you about the acceleration figure almost reaching the one of a porsche taycan turbo and the same speed the same top speed as the taycan turbo 260 kilometers an hour or 160 miles per hour whereas the normal overdrive version would be 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour so they are hitting here figures of a EV supercar at a quarter of the price or something that is of course really impressive. Rear wheel bias again because the rear electric motor is stronger and there is even not only a GT mode where everything is stressed and the sport is level but even a drift mode available. Kia made it a little bit more complicated to reach that drift mode because it's supposed to be only for closed roads and in that drift mode just the rear axle is active and then you can even do some donuts and some really great action but this is again reserved for closed circuits and i know you always like to see the turning indicators and the interesting thing is when i really use the turning indicator stock column here left or also on the right side you can see this is then a cascading light really cool however if i use the hazard lights when they flash at the same time you have no cascading function it flashes just normally and the same it's also happening at the rear let's take a look here hazard lights and if i deactivate them and just put the turning indicator like here on the right side for example or then switching over to the left side then once again you have this beautiful cascading function and if you take a close look here it's really interesting because this is kind of like an even surface and then when you go to this here this is really a three-dimensional surface you can actually also touch this is the car key also with this remote parking function that you can park your car in and out with the key for basically flush door handles and when you open that vehicle they come towards you door closing sound pretty solid like that and then inside of the doors top part here is somewhat soft and here then you have the microfiber inserts really nicely done definitely and then you have that gt interior with a special steering wheel special form this is also a leather wrap, wrap a high grade leather wrap so this whole interior is animal free awesome by kia this one has a special gt button left mode driving modes normal sport eco and then here one press and you are immediately in that sportiest GT mode and then the fitting contrast stitches to that. Also special seats, it gets sport seats with more bolstering on the side, so a sportier setup and here also this racing layout and also leather outside and microfiber on the inside. So once again a very 
animal friendly and sustainable approach and no matter which version you pick of the EV6 it's always animal free so that's really cool. Then seating position it's actually quite comfortable so there are more comfortable cars for taller persons but are they less comfortable than the normal seats you get in the EV6? Maybe a little so I think for everyday driving I would maybe prefer the normal seats but it always depends on the um, individual body. As for the headroom, it gets close with 189 or 602, but it's still okay. And we still have a lot of manual buttons here for the cruise control, for example, and right side here for the volume. So a good user interface, not all hashtag capacitive BS. And here you can see this dual screen setup, two times 12.3 inch. We'll soon take a detailed look to that. Interior over here, very clean layout, looks more than futuristic. Also here with the structured service at the dashboard. And interesting as for the user interface is always this lower area here. So we do have manual climate knobs. That's easy to control. The vent strength here in the middle, if you get used to that, at least when you know that. And then you can also switch that whole thing here to a hotkey field for map nav that you can access the navigation in a quick way and then this one becomes the volume knob that's the same in the normal kia ev6 further down below also separate buttons for seat heating and heated steering wheel this is where you turn on the vehicle and this is here the driving selector so drive neutral and reverse inductive charging pad for your smartphone but for apple carplay and auto you have to use the cable then you have more space underneath here the ambient lighting here, by the way, does switch depending on the driving mode, normal, this is the sport mode, and this is then the GT mode. A wide open lower middle console with a lot of space here. And then as for the connectors, that's interesting, 12 volt. Then this is a charger, USB-C, another USB-C charger here for charging only. The only connector is here where that stick is, and then you have to use this USB-A port for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. Yeah, that's short. I use a short cable and put the smartphone here or a longer cable and then you can maybe use these here, these cable holders here at the side and put the cable right here and then put the smartphone here or the, yeah, maybe here at the inductive charging pad. But yeah, maybe not the best solution if you're using a plugged-in phone and most of the time you will do that. Infotainment system is, let's say, not the fanciest one more basic the layout could be a little bit more modern the map is somewhat usable but still has this strange grappling hook effect somehow so most of the time probably um i mean there's also this you know there's an ev overview here with the range and so on but yeah most of the time you will probably use then the apple carplay and apple carplay or android auto here we go this is the projection there we are, and this one is equipped with the Meridian sound system, which has a nice sound and, you know, a bass you can really feel in your body as well. So, um, yeah, overall quite happy then with that. Hmm, quite efficient drive here when looking at the consumption figure. So that's giving us a nice range and you can change some of the views here, but you can't have like a full map view there. Then in the driving modes, you see here it changes also from design, sport mode with a little bit more red, eco right here, or then in GT mode. And there you have the full potential, full torque in the normal driving modes. You can also use a pin down, but even in the pin down, you don't have the full torque that you would have then in the GT mode, which is more than 700 Newton meters. Really impressive. Head up display is also nice to have, but it's somehow strange because it's only really in focus in a very certain angle you look at. It does have, by the way, animated arrows when you have GPS running. In the rear you can see they are using this EV platform, battery in the bottom of the vehicle, no middle tunnel whatsoever, everything flat floor. This looks very welcoming indeed and instead of the doors, is once again nice microfiber here, just the top part is hard packed then. Yeah, I mean... It's not the highest price segment, although the GT, of course, is then higher in the price, but look at that. I mean, it's not the longest vehicle of all, and there's plenty of legroom, although this is set to my driving position. So yes, the normal seat, if you put, pick a GT line or something, might be a little bit more comfortable, but this one has an advantage for people in the rear, because with these sport seats, which are slimmer, 
you have more legroom than in a normal EB6. That's interesting, right? So if you maybe have talks at home, hi, you know, honey, we need the EV6 GT, the sportiest version, yeah, because it's more practical. You have more space in the rear, right? That's an argument, isn't it? <laughs> well, but in the rear, it's also decently comfortable. Headroom-wise, also fits here for tall adults. You can also change the angle of the back part here a little bit, more upright or more laying back, or fold it here completely. And even in the middle seat, it's possible to sit to... Yeah, this can easily house five tall adults. That's a cool thing. You basically have a compact EV supercar, which is suitable for everything in everyday driving life. That's the cool thing. That's interesting. Have I seen them before? No. These are like cup holders, which can be folded out or go away. Interesting. And also a ski hatch is available. And in the middle part here, you have two more USB-C chargers. And even a real power socket here underneath the rear seats. The trunk capacitor here, a little less than 500 liters, but still usable. It's not the you know most versatile trunk, but easily accessible. This is a width of a meter of 40 inches. And you can see here in the front part, it's a little bit more. And then towards that rear part here, between the um, axles, yeah, it's, it's still somewhat working. And the length here, you see, length here is about 90 centimeters and that's about 35 inches. The overall height right here about 70 centimeters or 28 inches and you can see we did you know place all our stuff in here when I put it out there's a charging cable box available here that is possible but you can also store something underneath here if you like and for folding the seats you can use these that's of course a practical thing to have like with an estate easily folding everything and then you have the full length capacity. Is there a frunk? Yes, this one does have one on this cover. Well, it's not too big. I don't know. Charging cable would also fit here if you, you know, if it's not too big, not too long. Battery, 77 kilowatt hours net, which translates into a range in good conditions, 400 kilometers or 250 miles. You can score the same range just like the other models if you drive it you know, in a calmer way. Of course, if you really use that power, the range will be less. Well, and also all the other EV6 customers so far always pick the big battery, and this one here only available with the big one. Recharging AC or then DC charging with that 800 volt uh, architecture, and that means quick charging when the battery is hot already. It's possible in 18 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. And this one here is a, um, it's a very cool way to hide this charging flap, isn't it? Welcome guys, Kia EV6 GT. And we start with the acceleration. Is this an EV supercar? Let's find out. Woo! <laughs> that was 150 kilometers an hour on that short track. Wow, that was really supercar-like acceleration. And yeah, one of my theses is actually that supercars are less attractive nowadays because EVs like these that are so much more affordable already deliver the same kind of acceleration. Maybe not the handling. We'll find more about that. Uh, more about more. We'll find out more about that very soon here on the handling parcours. But acceleration-wise. Wow, super impressive, isn't it? Now one more time with an opponent. That's oh, quite similar. We're just head on a... <laughs> um, I think it was a draw. <laughs> and now with the Kia EV6 GT on the racetrack, first we'll go to the sports mode. This is actually giving you more response from the throttle pedal, so everything, acceleration and so on, goes faster from steering and so on. This car is not developed for the racetrack, but it gives you serious punch out of the corners here on this very tight racetrack near Stockholm, Sweden. And wow, accelerating out is just awesome. We do feel the acceleration. We feel all the G-forces. 0.9 is the actual maximum G-force when accelerating here on this small crest. And wow, really great in power. And in these sportier modes, we have the ECS here, the electronically controlled suspension. So we also have the stiffer feedback then from suspension. You remember what I said earlier, they changed the spring rates in the front softer, in the rear stiffer than the normal model. 
you say, hey, wait a minute, softer in the front? Yeah, that's because you have more control then. And at the same time, the ECS, the electronic dampers, they make the car also both more comfortable and sportier because they can adapt to the situation. It's also really cool that we have a car in front of us. So nice view then for you also through that camera in the middle. And we can step it even a little bit further going here into the GT mode. The GT mode lets you spin the car a little bit more. So it's not that the, e, uh, that the electronic stability control is completely off, but it already shows you a um, you know, stability control off sign. It's not that, you know, like 100% off, but you can play with that car. And I immediately feel, basically on both axles here, also some tire squeaking, I can push that car way further. The suspension is leaning into the corners. There you feel that the setup of the vehicle is a GT setup. It's not a sports car setup. It's not meant to be used for track days. We do that here today to test a little bit of the performance, but for racetrack driving, it would lean a little bit too much into the corner, but wow. I mean, if you consider that this one here is a third or maybe a fourth of the price of a Porsche Taycan Turbo, and we have basically almost the same performance. Yes, maybe not the handling, but at the same time, this car is way lighter than some of the very, you know, way more expensive EV supercars. So yes, indeed, it might not have the stiffness of the suspension for the racetrack, but other than that, yeah, it is definitely some kind of an EV supercar in disguise, at least from the acceleration and the power figures and so on. It's a lot of fun. The seats here are also keeping us quite tight and also due to the Alcantara surface, we don't slide on them that much. And you can give your passengers or cameramen really a hard time. How are you doing, Michel? Quite good. I Still really good? Worse Still. Sometimes. You felt worse? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely a lot of fun and wow. I mean, at that price point here where they will sell the car, uh, heard like 50, 65K or something. Wow, this is really amazing what, what you can have in that vehicle. Here you can see, ah, it's sliding a little bit, having a lot of fun. But yeah, as I said, for track use, you would probably need a stiffer suspension. But I actually feel that the setup they went for is a very good choice because you can have the sporty vehicle. At the same time, you have a lot of comfort with the, um, with the adaptive dampers. And you have to think about most people will not use this vehicle here on the racetrack, but on normal road driving. And then it's a clever choice to go for a suspension, which just gives you more comfort. Wow, this accelerating out is really good. We have a rear wheel bias because the rear electric motor is stronger than the front one. And we also have the so-called ELSD. LSD, yo. <laughs> this is a limited slip differential for the rear axle. And that actually gives us more power to the outside wheel on the rear axle. And that is also, once again, helping me when I accelerate out of the corner. The car is basically pushed around by this limited slip differential. That's a pretty cool thing to have. So, yeah, really nice to steer this car here around these very, very tight corners. And, well, yeah, that accelerating out, that is just accelerating now at 150 kilometers an hour on really very, very short notice. Remember, 3.5 seconds was the acceleration figure. 0 to 1 kilometers an hour or 0 to 62 miles an hour. Yeah, and once again, <laughs> that is close to a Porsche Taycan Turbo, and the top speed is indeed identical to a Porsche Taycan Turbo, 260 kilometers an hour or 160 miles per hour. Very, very impressive indeed. And now to street driving moderation, more slow driving. <laughs> and now to... <laughs> Thanks for letting me know in yeah. advance. Sorry, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so that way, I mean, I was starting to get on the road, you know, from private ground. So, yeah. You need to enter the roads in a safe way quickly, right? So, yeah, that's the thing. GT mode is always there to attack. It's interesting that, by the way, even if you use that drift mode, which is rear wheel drive only, and you exit doing a donut, the front axle is being used again. The car sees like, oh, he wants to cancel the donut. And then it's going for the front axle again. It's a very interesting um, kind of safety system. Of course, when you're in normal GT mode, you're always, always drive, best performance, best acceleration and so on. And also for safety, of course, that you have all the traction you need actually. 
but normal driving you would stick rather in that normal mode and then you can also score equal consumption figures just as a normal all-wheel drive model. There are hardware changes to both electric motors. They are not completely different, but there are notable hardware changes. And if you drive slowly and cruise control and so on, and also now good temperature conditions, 19 degrees Celsius, so like um, in the 70s Fahrenheit, um, you can end up with something around 20 kilowatt hours on 20, 21 kilowatt hours and 100 kilometers. So yeah, that's some 30 kilowatt hours on 100 miles approximately that. And this translates then to a real world driving range of around 400 kilometers or 250 miles in summertime in good conditions. It does have a heat pump and we also did some winter testing. So you can also check out the normal EV6 um, episode, we will link to that as well. And the range doesn't drop down, you know, extraordinary. Of course, it's a little bit less than 400 kilometers or 250 miles then, but still range and efficiency is good with that vehicle. There are more efficient EVs, yes, but this one, of course, has the advantage of the great fast charging capabilities if the battery is preheated. Here now, when driving on the road, normal mode, the most interesting thing to me is the suspension. Because I talked about that they did change the spring rates, softer front, stiffer in the rear, but at the same time you have the adaptive dampers on the inside then, the ECS. And this is really giving you good comfort because one of the things I did criticize a little with the normal EV6 was that the suspension was fine but for some road conditions too stiff and here the adaptive dampers are evening that out a little so it's not that you would get the gt model and it's a more uncomfortable ride it's more the other way around you get the gt sports model but at the same time the suspension is more comfortable but without being less sporty because of these adaptive dampers and that's also the thing i talked about on the racetrack the suspension is not laid out for the racetrack and it wouldn't make any sense to do so. It makes more sense that you can have this GT ride experience, that you have comfort on road driving because at the end of the day, no one will take this one on the track. Everyone will drive it on the road, enjoy awesome quick acceleration, but more appreciate a comfortable suspension. And that's exactly what they've done here. That makes it really, really good in the driving experience. Also, quite silent, talked about that earlier, we have also these special Michelin Sport tires, which have this foam on the inside for less rolling noise. That's also quite notable, especially here on slower speeds. It's very, very silent in here, so it's a very nice, comfortable ride. And also, here these seats, they keep us tight, also cozy with this, you know, Alcantara or microfiber experience. So you can also go on some longer rides. Of course, as for the vehicle segment, it's not the biggest vehicle. So if you think about, they are also more comfortable vehicles for tall people like me. But overall, I'm quite happy with the seats. Of course, you can also adjust them. These are the manual ones in here. But you see also doing that while driving is not too complicated, actually. We have the car internal G the GPS running at this moment, by the way. Most of the time you will use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because here the car internal GPS is, let's say, okay, but nothing more, you know. Also, how you know, the, the display and so on, definitely the CarPlay or the Android Auto, like Google Maps or Apple Maps, and they are definitely more clear to read and also better um, traffic information and so on and so on. Here, that's what, what I was searching for also, also, some bumps in the road, and the car is handling that very well. It's not that these bumps would be transported to your lower back. You feel them notably, yes, because the suspension is not super soft, but definitely also here some you know gravel on the side of the road. I think they really found a good and nice setup here, because most of the time we have rather the thing that hey, we can test the car on the track and something and it's performing very well. But then you go to the road and the suspension is super uncomfortable and doesn't give you that everyday driving comfort you would actually need. But here they really paid more focus that you have that comfort in everyday driving. And then 
you have just this flow here actually. As for recuperation, the standard recuperation mode is yeah, that was also very nicely done, evening out that wave in the road, is level one. So that means some regenerative braking when I let off the throttle. And here with the right pedal, I can do it to level zero. And then the car is just rolling, 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 rolling. Ha, that's maybe a new meme here, right? <laughs> and then left pedal, level two, so stronger recuperation. And then level three, or max even. And that is also then called eye pedal. Eye pedal. <laughs> yeah, everyone's, I mean, since, since the beginning of the iPhone, everyone is using like eye everything. You know, everything is eye something nowadays, right? So, and then, oh, there's a Optima, Kia Optima. So now, it was Optima, right? So now, letting off the throttle, and here you see hard deceleration. So then you can actually use it as for one pedal driving. Does it also stop to zero? There's no one behind us. Here it comes. No. Does it go to zero? Does it still keep rolling? Let's see. Zero, yes. Goes to zero, so you can really use that one pedal driving. And the recuperation here, of course, is really strong because you have dual motor, one in the front, one in the rear. And then you can have even a higher kilowatt figure than with fast charging by regenerative braking. That's, of course, very, very impressive. So the central question, of course, for street driving was, can this still be your everyday driver? Although it's the top Super GT version with EV supercar-like acceleration, definitely, and maybe even a better everyday driver than, than the normal uh, version of the EV6 because of these ECS, the adaptive dampers. Although we have 21 inch wheels mounted. So although we have these huge wheels, still great comfort from suspension. I think that's really a yeah, great job. Maybe, I mean, that would also make sense if they would offer the adaptive suspension also for the normal models. Maybe that will come at a later stage or something. Um, let's look out to that. And here on more that countryside road, which is ideal conditions and speed for EVs, then we see also this consumption and the range figure is being confirmed at this moment, even a little bit less now at 90 kilowatt hours on one kilometers, so like 29 kilowatt hours, 100 miles. So uh, this gives best efficiency will drop down and at really high speeds or then it's really cold in winter time. By the way, we can also set cruise control here. So this features also everything you need for relaxed driving on the motorway. And it also has some active lane keeping assist, which is already working in a countryside road. Here, for example, it says, where are we here? Now, it depends on, you know. So sometimes it's realizing what's going on. I felt some resistance in the steering wheel, run off road protection as well. You maybe hear the acoustic but it's more meant to be for the motorway where you have clear signs in the middle and also um, on, on the right side. Overall, definitely a good everyday driver's package here. Very impressive, this EV. You should also compare our normal EV6 review and of course, the internal competitor, the Ionic 5.